Hello, I'm Brian Colon, Creature Curator, and welcome to Monday, July the 17th. On tonight's episode, I'm going to be painting this uh, fantastic beast, this uh, Lumberjack Warhound. I've uh, I sculpted this over three sculpting sessions, which if you'd like to catch up on, you can check out on my YouTube channel, uh, YouTube uh, slash Brian Colon Art. If you have any questions, please let me know along the way. I'm more than happy to share any knowledge that I have. All right, let me make sure that I can see uh, Facebook comments as well. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and start painting. Uh, I'm probably going to start with some of the elements, like there's some bone elements that are in the axe. Like I like to put teeth and things into the piece. So I'm going to, for almost all of this, I'm going to be using Reaper miniature paints. Um, I'm going to start out with some graveyard bone, and I'm going to drop this down on my palette. For a palette, I just use a piece of plexiglass. Every now and again, I'll scrape it down a little bit, um, but just put a little bit in there. I'm just going to... A little bit of this uh, Reaper Mini Paint goes a long way. So I'm just... And I'm also using just a, a flat number four brush. This one's a little bit beat up. And when I'm working with the textures that I have with my sculptures, it really uh, starts to get... It really smacks around the brush and, and gets pretty beat up. So when I spray painted this black... A lot of this is really going to soak up and absorb a lot of the color, but for now it. Uh, so you, you tend to have to put in a couple of a couple of coats along the way. But let's just go ahead and get started. I just dipped in a little bit of the graveyard bone. I'm just going to gently dry brush on top of this tooth-like part of the axe handle. Thought I'd start with this part, then figure out where I want to go next. A lot of times I make up and decide, make color decisions on the fly, but since this is a uh, for a client, some of the colors have already been decided. Like this is going to be a primarily black dog with orange war paint and some orange down its down its chest and torso. And I will be pivoting this around as I go, just to make sure that I get all of the areas that I need to capture and don't miss anything. A lot of that also comes with tilting things up just to make sure you get every angle. Now, putting just this base coat down of this uh, this bone color, um, just got to drop a little bit on, let that dry, and then keep going. So I'm going to take that same color and work that into the axe itself. And this is going to, again, take a couple of coats because you want to get this so it doesn't have the the paint brush strokes in it. So you just put on a layer, let it dry, put on another layer. Then you can start to blend colors together once you start building up that layer, that color. Now, uh, when spraying it black, one of the nice things about it is that in the recesses of the sculpture, it'll really start to uh, uh, let, let the uh, the negative space kind of shine with that black and you don't have to really dig in there and it'll show off a lot of the details. So again, I'm just going to squirt more of this graveyard bone down. And I decided that I wanted the axe to have more of a uh, bone type feel versus like a metal feel to the actual, to, to, the, uh, to the weapon part of it. Uh, because that way I could work it more into my world of Revelo and make it more of a, a magical item that this Warhound is carrying. Not that there aren't metal items in my world, but um, it just seems to have a, a greater sense of age of something that was made from bone. And so, also in the uh, window, you'll see a rotating GIF of some of the my previous uh, sculptures. We'll do this all up on this side, and then we'll flip it over and uh, do the paint on the other side as well. Then I'll probably take this same... I try to pull colors. If I use it in one place on the sculpture, I try and pull it in somewhere else as well. And I will see about pulling this color into uh, the other side, or into the other side. I'm going to pull this color into the teeth of the beast as well. Let's see. And so tonight I'm streaming with a, some software called uh, Restream, which I've never used before, but it's allowing me to stream to multiple channels all at once, which is pretty crazy. I think it's got a, a, like a little bit bigger of a delay, so folks, uh, if anybody chats 
in, in, uh, in the respective chat room. It may take me just a little bit longer. Hey, Jeff Baca, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. For anybody else that, uh, oh, you saw that show up. That's, that is on the Twitch channel. So again, anybody that's just tuning in, I did sculpt this on uh, three uh, other stream episodes. You can catch up on that on YouTube if you have an interest. And I just I'm just doing a base coat right now on this part. And with this, it doesn't really matter which way the brush stroke goes because. All those strokes are going to be worked out um, before this piece is done because you really don't want to have these painterly strokes in something like like the axe handle or the axe part. I need just a little bit more of this, this uh, initial bone color to start things out. Squirt a little more on my palette. Let's see. All right, gonna drop a little bit more in here just to thicken this up. The magic of these uh, miniature paints, the Reaper mini paints, is they really start to dry super fast. So if I move on to something else and I come back to it in just a little bit, it'll be time to go ahead and put another coat on it. So it'll it'll start to come together really quickly. I also try. I'm trying some new lights this evening. Some some that I had like in my shed that I forgot I had from when I was trying to photograph some stuff for like for selling on eBay. So I also like diffused it a little bit with a, a bit of a white, uh, just a white cloth. So hopefully it won't be too hot and catch anything on fire in the middle of stream. If it does, and I'm sure it will uh, make for some good entertainment. All right, so I got that base down. I'm gonna spin this over just a little bit and now I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here. It's gonna be a little darker than normal, so it's a little bit hard to see in here. Let's see, try to make sure I can see if there's a, all right, there we go. I'm gonna just lay a little bit down on the teeth in here, because he does have some teeth showing inside the mouth, where he's got a little bit of a snarl coming up, where the, uh, the ax is hanging out. And by just gently dragging the brush across it, some of the natural uh, grooves that I put in during the sculpting process are going to show. And I'm going to come back in and clean up some of the area where my brush is going over on top of the fur with darker color. So it's okay if, I, if I'm a little bit sloppier in here. But I'll also go in and wipe away a little bit with my thumb as we go. All right, gonna spin this guy around. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. Come on, out of here. Okay, with this, I have a number two Trakel brush. Let me shake some of that water off of that brush. Anytime you hear that smacking sound, it's just the glass hitting my water, my paintbrush. Just wanted to get something with a little bit finer detail to have a bit more control on this tooth. So I can kind of tuck it in just a little bit into the lip and it's gonna get that painted up just fine. All right, and then I'm gonna do just a little bit more here on this tooth. Oops, almost dipped it in my drinking water. That would not be cool. All right, so once I have that going, I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat since I still have some of this paint on this side that is probably good and dry. And then I think from here, I'll, I'll grab a brownish color to kind of blend into it, to have it, it blend just down so it has a little bit of a gradation down from where it's gonna meet the metal joint here and pull down into the, uh, pull down onto the tooth. All right. 
Now, for the brown color, let's see, what am I going to grab? Black and brown, no. Maybe. Alright, another, uh, I grabbed black and brown twice. I guess I have a couple of those. I have a walnut brown. I'm going to grab walnut brown. Again, this is a Reaper mini paint. Walnut brown. Going to squeeze just a little bit out on my palette because I'm not going to be using a whole lot of this right now. Just going to Try and get just a little bit of the paint just on top of the tip of the brush. And just gently blend this down. And the walnut brown is going to have a slightly, it's going to have a grayer tint to it. And a lot of times with this, I will work colors over and over again. And just keep blending more in and just let it dry and then add more to it. Because the more you build the colors in here, the, the, the greater richness and depth there's going to be, and the less painterly it will look, it will start to, it'll definitely have more of a real natural feel to it. Luckily, the uh, way this is mounted on here, it's really grabbed on strong. It's locked in place, so if I accidentally bounce it around a little bit, it's not going to mess it up on the, uh, on the landing when dropping it back down to the table. Okay. So gonna drop a little bit more of this color here. Somehow, the song always jumps on and it always like repeats and repeats and repeats. All right, there we go. I'm gonna put another coat of the graveyard bone on here before I start working the uh, working the walnut brown into it. That way, it can start to thicken up and start to look a little more finished. But I will need some more of the. Uh, Graveyard bone on my palette. All right, going to drop a little more in here. And there we go. Starting to look a little, little nicer now that it's starting to fill in. That black really um, makes you want to add a couple of coats to things just to make sure that it's it's on nice and thick and you're not seeing any of the black through it, except for in some of the nooks and crannies is where you want it to be. So I hope everybody's having a good Monday. Mine has been successful. I'm excited to be painting on this critter. All right, put another coat up here. I'm gonna drop a little bit more onto the top. Huh. All right, I'm gonna spin this guy around just to, one more time to uh, to get some of this. Do a second coat on the back here. So this guy is gonna go with me to uh, Gen Con in August. I'm gonna be taking him to. Uh, to Dogmite Games booth, and they're gonna put this on display in their booth. They make a lot of really amazing uh, wood products uh, for gaming accessories like dice holders, dice towers, um, all sorts of really well-crafted pieces. So I'm excited to see this in their booth. Put a little bit more of this graveyard bone down onto the pallet. a little bit more. Give me just a second to see if make sure that this is working right because it doesn't show the Facebook on uh, um, for some reason it will not show the Facebook comments in my chat stream. So let's see. Let's see if I can make sure that I'm seeing everything properly. Oops. So, let's see. Don't mean to uh, have that audio coming back on. All right, let's see if I can see this. Test. All right. All right, I can see it. Very good. 
sorry about that slight delay. Since this is the first real time that I'm using Restream, I wanted to make sure um, that this is working well, especially since it's pushing to Twitch, Periscope, YouTube Live, and Facebook all at the same time. It's crazy try it's crazy just thinking that I can reach so many different potential audiences or different people all at once. So again, I just laid down some of this graveyard bone color onto the the bony uh, texture of the axe. I want to go ahead and put a little bit more in another layer into the teeth just to give it another build. And then we will go ahead and start working some of that walnut brown color in to start giving it some of the shading. Again, with, with this side, I'm going to try and use a slightly smaller brush. I'll be using this number two round. I'm just going to go up in here and just going to have to try and go a little bit cleaner this time around. Just so it can... There we go. And so the, the main colors of this are going to be grays and blacks on the majority of this, this uh, Lumberjack Warhound. And then there will be lots of orange accents and highlights to it, because those are the uh, our dog mites uh, brand colors. All right, and so I'm gonna give a little drop right there, just tilting this up just a little bit to make sure that I get all of the angles that I can see for the teeth so that I'm not missing anything as it rolls around the shape that I sculpted for the teeth itself. And if anybody has questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, I'm gonna spin this again and get the teeth right here. Just for a one more coat on that. Now I'm gonna rinse that brush out. We're gonna grab some of that walnut brown and start pulling some of that color down into the uh, into this axe here. Okay. Just grabbing just a little bit of the walnut brown on the tip of the paintbrush. And that goes a long way. So I'm going to take that and we'll blend it up into here. I'll grab some of the graveyard bone and start just blending it together. And then just keep going. And... All right, so now that I've got that blended in just a little bit, I'm gonna take some of that. It starts to give it a little bit more of a grayish color, which is kind of nice. It'll start to build the colors up on top of one another. I need to drop down a little bit more of the uh, graveyard bone down into there, squirt. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of this uh, walnut brown down below and start blending that down and as that starts to dry brush its way down I'll grab a little bit more of the graveyard bone and just kind of fade it and blend it into one another I'm just doing this back and forth a couple of times it'll start to get it to the right colors that I want it to be. It'll have the right builds that I want it to have. So I want to add a little bit more here. And then I think the up on top I'm going to give it more of a metal color for around the what's holding this bone to the wood. I also kind of want to bring a little bit of this color down into the base here as well, just to add some more color variation and depth. So I'm going to go ahead and grab more of the graveyard bone and pull that in and blend it as I go.
All right, so that's starting to get some some base color going on that. Gonna bring a little bit more of the graveyard bone up here and blend this back down in just a little bit. So a lot of times with things like this, I'll start to start out with really like two main colors, then I'll come back in and add darker shadows and and with different co with different colors and highlights with another color. But this will really start to get the foundation going for what I want it to be. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. Keep blending. All right. Now that I've got that, I'm going to spin this guy around and do the same thing on the back side of that axe. And so now I'm going to grab again with some of the... Uh, when, when you're doing something like this and you're working on both sides, you got to keep paying attention to as things go, go across different planes of the piece and how the paint's coming over on that side. But I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that walnut brown, drop a little bit of it along the top side, a little bit along the bottom side here. I'm just going to start blending that down. And once it starts dry brushing and starts working itself out of the brush, I'll go ahead and grab some of the graveyard bone and start working that into it as well. then it should start to blend together a lot smoother as these layers start to combine. It's just so far away right now. All right, blend that in. A little bit more of the, the uh, brown walnut color. Keep working that down, that'll have a nice gentle fade to it. Knowing that things can be a little bit looser on these early stages and they get tightened up as the layers keep building on top of one another. I'm gonna add some of this, uh, some of the walnut color down along the bottom, just like I did on the other side. And then I'll blend this on up. And just blend that stuff down. All right. Getting a little more of that walnut brown down along the bottom in this crevice here, and then I'll spin this thing around so it's gonna be a little bit easier to see. Let's see. Gotta pull some of the colors over here, like I was talking about when, when you get a seam there, you wanna make sure that it all kind of blends together well. Grabbing a little bit of the walnut brown. Gotta put a little bit more on my palette. And just gonna put just a little bit right here, a little bit up here. Bring that down just again. Pull a little bit into the crack crease here. Just gonna keep blending this down. And brush, brush, brush. Uh oh, I'm almost out of the uh, the graveyard bone on my palette again. Let's put a little bit more on there. Gonna need to pick up more of the. Graveyard Bone from Reaper. It's probably one of my favorite in the bone variety colors. They have such fantastic names to their color, their paints. Okay. Put a little bit more on this side, and then I think I'll move on to something else, some other part of this for a little bit, while that completely sets up and get to take a look at it, stand back from it for a little bit. Actually, maybe a little more over here. Blend this in just a little bit. So it'll be nice once I go and start putting some some shadows into this and then start pulling in some, some more highlights. It'll all start to really pop. The different colors um, will start to come together well. All right, so 
gonna rinse out my brush, try and squeeze out all the excess water. Now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. We are going to grab some, we're gonna grab some, some oiled steel, um, which this is the only current paint that I'm gonna be using that is not Reaper Mini Paints. The other color that I'm going to be using is a gunmetal blue. So I want the metalish pieces that are on here to have a, a shine to them. But I also kind of want them to not just be gray, since there's going to be so much grays and blacks in this piece. I want it to kind of stand out a little more. You know what? Instead of that, I think to go with the orange and not have the uh, complementary color of the blue and just have that contrast, I think maybe more of a brass color is probably going to stand out more. And... Something I missed, which I shouldn't miss, is this little top of this axe is a tooth. So we need to give it some of that bone color as well before we move on. Can't believe I was gonna leave that high and dry. All right, so adding a little bit there, gonna add a little bit more. And just, Touch it up a little bit. We'll let that start to dry so then we can come back and put a second coat on it. While that's happening, we can go ahead and introduce some brass color to this. I'm going to go ahead and drop a little of that down on my palette. Not a lot because we don't have a lot of area where this is going to cover. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze out my brush and drop a little bit of this here. And laying this down as the foundation is good, but then it's gonna I'm gonna need to come back and blend other colors into it so it doesn't just look like a flat metal color. But I think the brass will be a better choice to go with the, the orange of the eyes and the orange of the that are that's gonna be in some of the fur. Spin that guy around just a little bit more to make sure I get everything on this side that I need to get. And that's really all that I need right there. So let's put a little bit in here. I'm going to, instead of using that flat brush that's already a little beat up, I'm going to go ahead and use a thinner, smaller brush. I'm going to use this round number two brush. And just gently come in and Get the areas that need to get painted up. And I'm just going to keep brushing that in. And once this, once I get this base layer of this bronze color in here. The uh, bone color should be done around the uh, little tooth that I, I did a little last minute. And then I'll go back in and add additional colors and builds on that. All right, gonna pull this around. A little more here. All right, definitely need a little more of that brass color on my palette. One thing when using a much smaller brush like this, it takes a little bit more time to just cut, do a little bit of coverage on the area. I'm gonna tilt this guy up just a little bit. Let's see if I can keep it in, not keep it in camera view. I will leave it where it is and I will just Crouch down a little bit. Trying to keep the top of my reflective head out of the camera. Okay. So we've got that starting to go on there. Get some of the details. 
And so now I've got to start working on the story for this and how it fits into my world Revelo. Okay, I'm going to paint the back side of this part as well. And you know what? Because if I tilt it the other way, it's going to be too far away for me to really reach. So I'm just going to paint it right here. It won't take that long to drop some of this copper color down, or this brass color. I always want to call it the copper. And gonna put a little bit more in. And right there, I accidentally pulled a little too much down. I'm gonna get the paint off my brush, squeeze out all of the moisture, and then kind of use it like, almost like an eraser. Kind of soak up the paint, pull it off with my fingers, a little bit more, a little bit more, and that'll pretty much get up what I laid down that did not need to be there. All right, so now I'm gonna pull some of this copper down around the back side. All right, so uh, got that base color going down. I'm gonna throw another coat of that on in just a minute, but while the uh, bone color that was in the uh, tip of the war, the axe cure dried. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more bone color. The, it, this is, again, the graveyard bone color from Reaper Mini. And I'm going to put a little bit of that along the top side to give it a second coating so that black is not showing through. And then I will drag some of that walnut color in to pull it up from the base and blend it up to the tip of that that piercing bone. Again, if anybody has any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, blending that in. Then I'll come back and put some, some lighter bone highlights in that after this dries up. That'll kind of, this is now all starting to kind of feel cohesive and part of the, the color palette of the rest of the X. All right. So I'm going to a little bit more of the uh, copper color. We're going to put a second coat on that before we start blending some other colors in to really build up the depth of color. And then we'll figure out a good color to, to mix in with this. Uh, I'll get some, let's see, let's do some Nightmare Black. Nightmare Black is really more of a blue-black. It, uh, but it has a nice uh, quality to it that I tend to use it in almost all of my uh, paintings. Now I just need to make sure that when I go to dip for it, I'm grabbing that and not the walnut brown, which I just happened to put really close by to it. Awesome, very cool. Well, tell uh, tell everyone I send my regards, Tyler. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you in the not-too-distant future. Not a lot of you, Tyler, but a lot of uh, a lot of the folks at work. But a lot of you as well. I imagine you will be running a lot of games at Gen Con. All right, so taking that that blue, that, that nightmare black that's really more of a blue color, and blending that into the copper gives it more of a excellent. Gives it more of a weathered, worn, tarnished look. It doesn't have such a uh, bright richness to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull some more of the copper in here. And then I'm going to grab some more of the Nightmare Black and blend that stuff in and try and do it nice and gentle since this is coming up real close on the bone color up here. All right. And then I'm going to uh, 
put another little little dab of the uh, copper on top of the br copper. I keep saying copper. The brass on top of these uh, uh, ball uh, ornamental balls there, and then uh, just to have those give them a little more shine and have them stand out just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna tilt this back, try and make sure I get every angle of this, grabbing a little bit of the Nightmare Black again, a little bit of the uh, brass, and pulling this stuff through. All right. And I'm gonna grab, this time I need to grab that smaller brush to finesse some of the details just a little bit. I'm gonna pull just a little bit of this down around the bottom and then I'll grab another little bit of the brass and blend that in together. All right, I'm gonna put just a little bit more here just to give it some more accent. Pull some of the brass in. Are you guys just working on the, uh, continuing on the same book at work this evening, Tyler? All right, I think that side is looking pretty decent. I'm gonna drop just a little bit more See if I can get it a little bit closer there. Drop just a little bit more right here. Blend that down around the bottom edge. And a little bit more of the brass up here. All right. Now that I've got that, gonna spin this around. Well, I'm just gonna quickly do this to the to the back side as well, because it's a little a little too much to spin this all the way around. So just gonna drop this in, put some of this blue in, grab a little bit of the brass color, blend it up. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna end up coming back in and touching up with some brass highlights at some point. One thing that I know is I never want to mix any of the uh, the like graveyard bone colors or anything with like the brass colors because it always gives it like this weird flesh color that just doesn't look right. It always kind of creeps me out. All right, gonna get a little dab of the brass just up under here where. It meets. There we go. Checking things from every angle. Always looking at where things are. All right. Now that I did that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and add a little bit more. Um, a little bit more of this uh, bone color. Since I've got the walnut brown and that there, I'm going to add just a little bit to the back of this axe here where I can see that it needs a little bit more attention. I'm going to try and bring this more into my lap just so that it's a little closer for viewers to be able to see what's going on a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab just a tiny little, tiniest little dab of, of walnut brown on the tip of my uh, brush and I'm going to gently drag it across here. Reason I'm doing it gently is because it's right where that meets the brass of the axe. And then I'm gonna bring a little bit more of this um, graveyard bone in and we're gonna start blending this stuff down. 
Down, 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 down. I just wanted to get a slightly cleaner line than what was there before. There we go. That is better. And I'll still be coming back and blending some of this in a little bit more and adding some highlights and some shadows up in here. But for now, that's a, that's a good starting point. And let's see. Let me shake out my brush a little bit. And then we will go ahead and I will uh, drop a little bit of, a little bit more, a little bit of, now I don't want to, I don't want to use that walnut brown in the teeth because I think then it'll all start to, the teeth, that the acts are going to start to blend together a little too much. So I'm going to grab a dark brown and I'm going to put that in and that'll help kind of add the shadows there. And that will give it enough separation, but still utilize the same, um, the same, uh, bleh, the same graveyard bone. So that will help with uh, getting those, keeping colors consistent on the piece. Well, it's shown that the broadcast was interrupted. Hopefully I'm not losing too much on the stream. Maybe it is just my cell phone that's, that's getting interrupted. But we shall see. All right, so I'm gonna just, let's see if I can turn this a little bit more. All right, I'm just taking some of this uh, darkened brown up into the top to the, the teeth right under the uh, right under the lip, and I'm gonna also grab some of the uh, graveyard bone. And I'm just gonna start pulling them together and blending them in place on the tooth itself and just blend them as I work it down to the tip of the tooth. I'm just gonna keep pulling all right. Well, it looks like my broadcast keeps dropping out. Hopefully it is not dropping out for you guys. Let's see. All right. Going to blend a little bit more of that graveyard bone back up into the tooth. And then I'm going to grab some more of that darkened brown and pull it into the tooth as well. And pull in a little bit more. And, and then I'm just blending that brown down into the lower part of the tooth and just kind of giving it a slight uh, gradation as it comes down. So give me just a second. Let me take a look. It looks like, looks like I might be dropping everything off. Let's see. Sorry, as I'm trying to see if this is still connected or not, or if my internet is going wonky, or if the RSS is going crazy. And if I start hearing myself in stereo, I know that, uh, I know that something is going crazy. Let's see. My internet is totally creeping. I hope that is not the issue. Could be that I'm just choking all of the bandwidth. Oh my gosh. All right, so uh, all of a sudden I'm seeing, seeing comments in... Uh, I'm seeing comments in Twitch. Sorry about that. I don't know why that didn't connect before. So if uh, if y'all are still in here, and uh, I appreciate you tuning in and saying hello. And I sorry, I forgot that I'm now streaming to multiple platforms. So I will do my best to say uh, when I'm talking to uh, to folks that are are not are on one channel and not on the other. But it looks like it disconnected again. All right, I'm just going to keep painting, and hopefully it will all work itself out with the sinking and all that stuff. All right, going to pull some of this bone color down into the bottom of the tooth. And then I'm going to spin it as well. 
do the same on the other side of the teeth. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit and blend this in. All right. It looks like for some reason everything is the uh, broadcast is just interrupted, so I'm going to stop streaming for a minute. Hey, Ham. I hope all of you uh, good to see you in the Twitch. It's, uh, I'm trying to stream to a bunch of different places all at once, and it seems to be getting hung up. Well, uh, good luck getting getting uh, off to uh, Dreamland. I hope to see you again sometime soon. I'm going to be back on the regular streaming here now, so uh, keep an eye out. Alright, so everything seems to be a little bit glitchy, so I'm going to uh, disconnect real quick and then relaunch, so hopefully this will uh, happen real quick. I'm going to stop streaming, quit my app, and start it back up. I'll be right back. All right, everybody. I am back with part two of Monday night's July the 17th, painting extravaganza. Um, seems like I was having some connection issues. I thought I would try and relaunch and see what happened. So, uh, hope uh, everybody is having a good Monday. And let's see if the web chat will jump in. Hopefully that'll pop up real soon. It is taking its good old time. And I'm going to go ahead and just keep painting along on this critter. And things will start to work itself out. Actually, let me close out of uh, this on my Facebook on my phone. And then I will hopefully be able to see things again. All right, this is popping back up. Let's see if this will, uh, this will launch. All right, the chat is not happening. Launch. Launch for me, chat window. So this is my first uh, real launch of uh, Restream. Using Restream. And Restream uh, allows you to stream to multiple places like Twitch, YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, all at once. So I'm giving that a go and seeing what happens. And uh, so far I can't tell yet if it's going to be the awesomest or not. I'm hoping it will because... Uh, it would be great to be able to uh, talk to a lot of different people all at once. Instead of just having to pick one platform to use. So, alright. It looks like I'm back up and running, I think. but only time will tell. I'm gonna give this a quick little test chat. See if that shows up in this chat window. No, it's still waiting for resources. Well, so far, on this first restream, not totally in love with it, but we shall see. I'd rather not be spending time dealing with tech technical difficulties and would much rather be uh, just sitting here laid back and doing the painting. All right. Well, so I've got the teeth kind of worked in. I'm not seeing chat, so hopefully that, maybe that will happen in a minute. Try and hit return again on that. Try and get that to relaunch. Let me hit test again, test two. 
Noops. All right. All right, I'm gonna quit out of the uh, out of Chrome. Start that back up. Hopefully, I will not. That will not be gone long. And maybe you will still see me since this is streaming through the existing uh, server that's happening. History. Restream. So let's see. Chat. Let's see what happens when I launch the web chat. Still waiting for the web chat. Come on, web chat. Do what you were supposed to do. And I'm going to go ahead and pop open a uh, Moobot Twitch just in case to see what happens there. Sorry about my face being all up in the picture. Let's see. And nothing is happening. All right, well, I don't know if my internet has just gone to crap or that doesn't usually happen. So most likely it is uh, something with the restream itself. Let's see. Let's see what happens 56 minutes ago. It says that I'm still live but I do not see any movement. All right, I'm gonna give it a go anyway and see what happens. I hope uh, hope y'all are seeing something because I'm not seeing much on my end. You can still hear me, but can you see me moving? Ah, darn. I thought this restream was going to be the most magical thing ever. Let's see. All right, I'm going to disconnect one more time. I'm going to create a... Oh, and you can see me? All right, well, that's cool. Well, if you can see me, and I just can't see the rest of the chat world with Twitch and YouTube and Periscope, I will have to make do. Maybe one day that will get figured out. All right, back onward and upwards to making with the painting. So, orange is a fickle color. I love orange. Excellent. Very good. All right. So thank you. I'm glad it's coming through. I, for some reason, it's frozen on my phone, the video. So uh, I'm glad that the chat and everything, and it's all coming through to you. So I'm going to use gory red as the base for uh, where the orange is going to go, just to give it that warmth that it needs before I put on more coats of the actual orange itself. So I'm going to Every now and again, you get a uh, tube of, of paint. You let a little bit too much dry up in the, in the tip of the tube. You got to pop it open and just pour a little bit out. So reds tend to go on significantly thicker and a little more opaque than oranges do, which is why I wanted to lay this down as the foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab just a little bit of this orange, or this red, and I'm also going to that back on and let's go ahead and I'm just gonna do some quick dr brushing of the red over top of the areas where I know that the orange is gonna be so the orange is kind of like the war markings of this beast but it's also gonna be down the chest and the belly And thank you again, Dino and Tyler, for, for saying that it's coming through okay. On the Facebook. All right, gonna pull this red up into here. And this will take just a couple minutes for this to start to set up. And while, while this red's happening, then we'll move around and start painting the red in some of the other areas to lay that base foundation. And then the, once the red is completely dry, then we'll start putting coats of orange on. 
And the more orange that you build up, the brighter it's going to be, the, the richer it's going to be in color. Now here, I'm going to go in and try and make sure I get all this in here. When I, when I prime this, I use a, just a black spray paint, and I always go in and tape the eyes off just with painter's tape and cut around the edges of it. And pull this in through here. All right, so I've got a little bit. It's almost like he's wearing wearing a mask. I built up the layer of fur just a little bit thicker on here as well. And drop that down. All right, going to pull this in. Oh, the music. Gonna pull a little in here. I need to grab another number four brush. This one's starting to starting to fan out a little bit. Which as I paint on my sculpted pieces, I can really do a number on these brushes. Oh gosh. I think I hear Game of Thrones going in the other room. I have a feeling last night's episode is getting rewatched. I will not give any spoilers away. I just, uh, it's like my music's not playing in here. And it's like, oh, I hear some nice, some nice painting music going on. And if I get a little bit outside the lines right now, it's not a big deal. But a lot of times what I'll do is I will just go and grab a different paintbrush with a little bit of water. Put a little bit of that water down and just kind of wipe it off. When you get it while it's still wet like that, it's real easy to uh, quickly wipe away. And gonna pull a little bit more up there. And gonna spin this guy around. We'll do this side real quick. I guess one of the reasons that it might get a little clogged up in there is when somebody doesn't put the lid back on it and it allows it to dry on the top of it. I can't imagine who would do something like that. All right, got him spun around just a little bit, get him a little closer, holding on to the base a little bit just to make sure I don't put my elbow down and drop it down to the ground. All right, following the lines of the raised ridge of that additional fur, And just gonna keep adding to it here. So after tonight, my next streaming day will be Wednesday from, should be Wednesday from 1 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon Eastern time. I believe on that one, if I can get some some dryness tomorrow and it's not raining, I'm going to try and do my best to sand down some of the uh, molded, the poured pieces from my latest Kickstarter campaign, sand down some of the edges, some of the seams, so that I can prime them and start painting those on stream. nothing there. Let's see. All right. I looks like it's telling me that I need to restart my broadcasting software, so I will be right back. Give me just one back to part 3 of uh of today's streaming episode. I'm hoping that this will connect uh, with everything now that I turned a couple things off and turned it all back on, restarted some applications. Yes, Dino, you know that is, uh, I'm very excited about getting that stuff taken care of and mailed out to everyone. The Kickstarter, that is. All right, so we have Facebook streaming again. Can't tell yet if the other ones are streaming or not. 
I'll give this a little test real quick. Test. I don't think that I don't think that chat window is gonna work. It's just kinda weird. Launch. Dashboard. I don't know if just too much is going on with the <laughs> with the computer or what. But I think since it's all web based, you would think it would all just work just fine. But who knows? Got a little bit of that red on. As you can see, like the red is really soaking into the black. It's really getting absorbed, so it's losing all the rich brightness of the, the red itself, which is totally fine since we're going to be coming back and putting uh, orange back on top of that. But with colors, when you, when you prime with black like this, you really have to do builds on top of it. But I would hate to prime something really light colored and then have to go back and like work so many dark colors down underneath and all the little crevices and stuff, I would just find that super challenging. So, all right, we've got red going in here. Got all that base foundation now. I'm gonna do red down the chest and throat of it as well. Or er, right under here, there's a definite ridge line that I've got going on that I sculpted that way intentionally so that when doing the painting part, it was an easy way to show the difference between the two. And I'm just gonna dry brush this super fast just to get this base foundation down. And I'm just gonna keep brushing on here. And I'm pulling this up. All right, so. That chat. I think I'm just gonna have to uh, figure out how to have a bunch of different chat windows open all at once and just look at those, especially if their native uh, web-based chat application is not going to, uh, not gonna house it right. I'll just be some sort of crazy person like with my eyes darting all over the uh, a bunch of different windows. up here with a little bit of finesse as we get up into the where the different fur lines are meeting and then just gonna pull this stuff down and quickly dry brush this in just like the bottom section and I'm gonna spin this guy just a little bit and I'm gonna tilt him up and A little more red. I'm gonna have to put a, pour a little bit more down on my palette. Not a lot, because we don't have a whole lot more that needs to be covered before dropping orange on. I think this should be enough foundation. Ooh, with a little bit of force, some of that red just actually came out. Move this guy around just a little bit to make it easier to get to. And a little bit up there. And I'm gonna give just a little teeny touch right on this side. All right, now that I've got that very muted, absorbed red going in there, and now that he's starting to look a little bit crazy, let's go and start put some oranges in here. So I've got a volcanic orange right here, which is a little more on the red side. We're going to work that in first, and then we'll come in and put a fire orange on top of that, which is going to be brighter. Going to shake this up pretty good and drop a little of this volcanic orange down on my palette.
All right, now that I've got, I'm gonna rinse that right out of my brush. I'm gonna try and squeeze all of the moisture out. It's one nice thing about wearing an apron when doing this stuff is you can just get it all sorts of messy. All right, gonna dip this in and uh, try and throw a little orange on top of this. And just gonna blend up. And while I add this orange in, having that red underneath is definitely making it easy, easier for this color to go on. And I hadn't done that before and I just thought about it for this, uh, this first go. Now let's see if this is showing this up. Nope. All right. So, so far, I love the concept of Restream. Not quite certain yet if I uh, love how it actually functions. Hopefully things are still coming through okay on Facebook. Not sure if uh, how things are going on Twitch or YouTube. YouTube... Uh, comments are not showing up in my feed. I have a different window open up for Twitch, but I've got my phone open up for Facebook. All right. Now this orange is probably going to take a couple of Awesome. I'm seeing, thank you, Carrie. I'm seeing yours in my Twitch chat. How's the stream coming through on the Twitch? The chat window functionality just kind of totally dropped out. It's just a black screen and nothing's really happening with it. We're the one that's supposed to show like Twitch, YouTube, Periscope all at once. Excellent. Well, that's good. I'm glad that's coming through okay. I totally missed a bunch of chats from from some folks earlier that were in the uh, Twitch stream, and I just didn't realize it. So I may just have to get a whole bunch of crazy-ass windows opened up. Oh, I've had to restart and relaunch this, uh, I've had to restart the, uh, the stream a couple times. <laughs> oh, that's the automated message that it says, uh, with the, uh, restream software. I'll just have to turn that stuff off, I guess. Especially if there's going to be technical difficulties, because I know that would, uh, get kind of agitating. All right, let's let that orange start to set in before doing another coat on that and start doing the orange down on, on its chest. Thank you for the heads up on that about the auto messaging. Awesome, glad it's still coming through, uh, Tyler, through Facebook for you. Thank you for, for the heads up. I need to see. Uh, I need to see if there's a way that I can post and everything, like uh, see if there's a way that I can post everywhere that has uh, like one unified chat where everybody could jump into. But I have a feeling most folks would not go for that. But the idea of not being able to see stuff is uh, is a little bit nerve wracking. Let's see. Let me see if I can open, like, if I can navigate the Twitch window to be tiny. But so that I can still see the chat. And then do a new one. 
and have it go to YouTube. Sorry for a pause in the painting extravaganza for just a second while I uh, figure out some of this uh, some of this uh, madness. Let's see if I can make sure I can mute this so I'm not uh, hearing myself. Let's see. All right, there's the chat on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make all this stuff work. All right, so I've got YouTube happening. I'm able to see that chat. I've got Twitch. I'm able to see that chat. I've got Facebook on my phone. This is gonna be crazy insane. Now if I can get Periscope. Then I'll be able to see it all. Just need to find myself on there. Need to find myself everywhere. All right. So, let me see if I can... Alright. It will be here shortly. Okay. It shows that I'm currently live. So, let's see if I can... Alright. Now, if I can just mute, make sure that that is muted. Alright. And now, okay, so now I have that up and running. Now I just have to make sure I do that moving forward. Thank you again, everybody, for your patience on tonight's uh, episode. All right, so now that I've got that, let's put some orange on this bottom part of this lumberjack warhound. Right. Stuff like this where I've got the fur like sculpted in and I'm doing the dry brushing across it. This is where the brush really start. This is where the brush really takes the, the brunt of the beating. Again, I'm going to be dropping down some more of the volcanic orange from Reaper Miniature Paints. And with that, I'm just going to grab a little bit on the brush and start laying it down. Gonna bring this all the way around. And keep pulling it up. And pull that fur all the way through. All right. Once I get a couple of coats of this orange on, get some of the highlight orange on, it's really gonna start to start to shine. I can feel the color palette of this is gonna it's gonna it's gonna be cool. It's gonna feel almost a little Halloweenish. And keep pulling this down. And then I'll come back in with some darker colors later, some like uh, some washes to kind of blend some of the uh, to put some of the, the the dark shadows back into some of the creases, some of the fur lines that I put in that some of this thinner paint is kind of seeping into right now. But then also natural shadows will solve a lot of that for me as this sits and it's how it's lit. A lot of those little uh, dips in the sculpting will, will be on display that way. Alright, I'm going to let that bottom section dry up a little bit. 
Most of this is pretty dry up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting on top there. All right. And some of that's still a little wet, but that's okay. Just gonna add another layer up here. Another little layer of the orange here. And a layer over here. Gonna grab just a scotch more and do this side. So I think after this, it's gonna be time to start figuring out while I let some of that orange dry before putting additional highlights on and keep building up that color. I think it's gonna be time to start thinking about the grays that are gonna make up the black build that is the majority of uh, the color palette of this Warhound. Gonna keep putting a little more of this orange on. And another little dab. All right, I think that's a good foundation there. There's a couple little areas along the edge. I think I need to come in with a thinner brush. I'll put some orange in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the thinner brush. Find a place to rest my hand. Try and get a nice clean edge with this. Knowing that I'll probably have to come back and touch this up later. Drop some of this down. All right, so getting those little details in will help really clean that up when it comes time to put the other, the other color along the edge. A little bit here, a little bit here. All right, gonna drop a little along the top. And then, should, debating if I should, I, I don't know if I should go ahead and mix up, start figuring out the colors for the rest of it, or if I should start working on the wooden colors that are going to be coming in on the handle of the axe. I think I should probably do that. Plus, and that'll give the oranges a little bit of time to dry up, and then I'll put another layer of orange on top, and then put a bright orange on top of that. Some of that, the uh, some of the fire orange. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab some wood color and see where that ends up going. All right, so so let's see. Let's pull colors in that I've already used so far. We're gonna go with the black and brown instead of the walnut brown. I'm gonna put a little of that down on my palette. Also going to, let's see, what else can we grab? Grab a creamy ivory. Again, another Reaper miniature paint. 
Gonna drop a little of that down. Okay, now my brush has a little bit of an orange tint to it. Let's squeeze this, make sure there isn't a real orange. There is a little orange in there. Shake that out a little bit more. All right. Squeeze all that moisture out. Let's go ahead and put a little of this brown down here. Pull it towards me. Grab a little bit of the ivory, pull that towards me. Turn this guy towards you so you can see it a little bit better. And just slowly work the colors into one another. I know that we'll do a couple of layers of these colors to help build the color as well. Go nice and gentle along the edge. And then I'm gonna spin around to this side and do the same thing. I'm gonna grab some of the brown along the bottom side. Gonna grab a little bit of the cream. And pull a little bit in this way. Blend it up into here. Okay, that's a good foundation for that. We'll let that start to dry, but we'll do down on this end as well. Now I've got to be a little more gentle with this side because it's a much smaller area to work with. I'm going to go back in and add some more color to that in just a little bit, but first I'm going to let that set up. And while that is setting up, I need to start working on some color of the uh, leather strap here that's holding on there. So I think I will do that in just a second. And let's see. All right, so while that's going, let's grab another color to work into this. Or let me go ahead and see what happens when I get that copper or that bronze and some of that brown and see if it gives it a flesh color or if it... No, this is going to be okay. I just cannot add the ivory color to it. Again, I try to work colors in that I've used in other spots on the piece so that you're not delving too far away from the existing palette. Some of this is going to take paint better than the rest. The uh, flatter uh, surface uh, seems to take it a little bit better than the rougher side, but that's okay. It's all going to end up looking good once it's all painted in and done. And I've got to just spin it around and keep painting all of these sides of it. grab a little bit uh, more of the uh, the copper color, the bronze color. Blend it in with that brown. Spin it around. Let's go ahead and blend that up just a little bit more. I'm gonna grab more of that black and brown, put some more of that into the piece. Okay, gonna grab this. Just start blending it up, and I'll be able to spin this guy back around so he's easier to see in just a moment. All right, let's spin this, spin that creature. All right, 
So now I'm going to blend some more of that, that black and brown back into this. I wanted to have that kind of underlining shimmer, but I still wanted to also have it be... Still have it that brownish color. Tilt this guy up just a little bit. Make sure I got everything underneath as well. their paint. It's built up inside of there. Okay. So, I want to put a little bit more of the brown into the wood color itself. Another layer of that. I do that mainly do the darker color down under where the snarl of uh, the beast is. And just kind of blend this up. Gotta do the same thing on the back side. Put some of that black into brown and then drag it up towards the top. Have that be a nice gentle fade there. Tilt it up, make sure I see it the same way underneath. I'm gonna do just a little dab of it over here as well. Here where it hits inside the mouth. There will probably be some more details added to that later on. But that's starting to come together okay right there. I think for tonight I'm going to call it a night just because uh, the technical difficulties kind of jam things up a little bit for me and uh, I want to just kind of take a break step back from this let the paints really soak into that black uh, that black uh, primer color and see how I need to adjust it and build onto it from there for everybody that has tuned in tonight in any one of the num numerous uh, streaming sessions thank you for tuning in I hope that uh, you have had a, a good time watching, and I hope to see you again. Thanks, everybody.